Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Japanese yen, the last best opportunity for a trade dollar versus a yen was a rally into the resistance up at 95. So we pulled into support at 90. We rallied up into the resistance at 95. Uh, we pulled back down to the support at 90 and went lower. And we extended the lows. But at that time, um, I made a note that we were coming into some kind of pretty solid support on the, um, the dollar versus the Japanese yen spot contract. And we had already had one nice bounce out of there at the beginning of the year in 2010 uh, at 85 cents. And this is the area where uh, the Japanese bank seems to step up and, and intervene. Uh, that was the origin of the big rally from 95, which was the last time that they were uh, intervening in the currency markets. We had a 10 cent bounce from 85 to 95 in January this year, or just before the beginning of the year. Uh, but now we're pushing through the backside. So the currency traders are ganging up on the Bank of Japan and saying, you know, you want to intervene, that's fine. We'll sell you all the yen you want. So um, if the basket turns around and starts to rally, we may have a bounce here against the uh, Japanese yen. But I know they're, they're terrible. It's, they're screaming in Japan. Their exporters are screaming because uh, they're, they, can't, uh, they can't export anything with the cost of the yen being as high as it is. You're a company that makes a product in Japan, and your costs are in yen, and your your revenues in dollars. You really got a problem. All right, so we're making a new low with the yuck, and I'd wait for it to kind of bottom out again if I was interested in an opportunity, a shorting opportunity to the moving averages might work. Um, but if the ba if the basket rallies, there could be a little possibility for some kind of a relief rally with the dollar versus the yen. So we'll see. Okay, and um, I think I'm coming up on the bottom of the hour, so I got through the presentation, got through all of the currencies that I had, um, didn't get a chance really to look at any of the Brazilian pairs, but uh, I promise you next time I do this, I'll try to focus a little bit more on those commodity currencies because um, that's where the action is. That's where all the money's flowing into the strong countries, and the weak countries like the U.S. dollar is where they're borrowing the money, so... If you have any questions, um, pop in. Okay. Hey, Michael, and hey to everybody from Online Trading Academy. I see a bunch of my friends. Uh, I've been on the road for the for the last year. I've been doing what I call the world tour, and so um, I'm out here. And uh, good to see everybody. Uh, hope to see you in the classroom next year in the uh, in the electronic classroom a little bit. Okay, so say hi to everybody. That uh, tell them I uh, I said hi to everybody. Okay. Steve, thank, thank you so much. Uh, Thanks, I just Steve. want to show everybody the skew charts at the ISE site. Uh, we have skew charts that everyone can view each day. You go to fxoptions.com, and here's the U.S. dollar, Canadian, um, and uh, there's an article that I wrote about options skew. So, for instance, what's interesting, Steve, is that uh, if you group these currency SKUs, you have U.S. dollar Canadian, which is, if you look at that green line, it's sort of that skewness or that smile uh, skewness, and it has the same skew as the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen. So, and that's just a recent development. So I'm not sure why, but the Canadian dollar in the last couple, of, about the last weeks, <coughs> has been acting a little more like the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen. So I'm I'm actually watching that to see. You know why? Because if you take a look at the Australian dollar AUM, it's not anything like that, and that's the way you, the U.S. equity markets look. You know that if the U.S. dollar rallies, you'd see the Australian dollar sell off in a pretty big way. So just wanted sure. to remind everybody that this is available at fxoptions.com. See, let me take uh, some questions. Uh, let's okay. just let me see if we can pass these through. Uh, Chuck says, "Will other Countries such as China or different countries in Europe support the dollar to maintain the, their currency value advantage. What do you think, Steve? 
Well, if I'm the Bank of China and I've got tons and tons of dollars, the last thing I want to see is the dollar go to 50 cents because then my money is gone, okay? <laughs> Half my money is gone. So I think the Bank of China, the central bank, is probably uh, buying undervalued dollars right now and selling overvalued euros. Just like last year, they probably bought a bunch of undervalued euros and sold a bunch of overvalued dollars on the last rally. So there's no proof that a central bank actually times their purchases, but they've been talking about diversifying their, their currency holdings. So doesn't it make sense to buy dollars when they're low and sell euros when they're high and then turn sure. around and buy euros when they're low and sell dollars when they're high? Sure, sure. Okay. I mean, yep. So that's my theory about it. Um, I think the, the currency traders in China are pretty smart. And Steve, what's your take on the Bank of Japan intervening, saying the yen is too expensive, you know, that everyone, you know, that they're selling it, everybody else should sell it. But meanwhile, the market is not respecting them, really. No. What, what, how do you trade that? Well, first off, um, I'm pretty sure you know that uh, the Central Bank of Switzerland is down about $12 billion trying to defend <laughs> the value of the Swiss franc right. against the right. euro. Right. And so it's, you know, central banks don't go broke. Uh, they can, whatever, they can do the, what they're doing and they can constantly average down or do what they need to do. Um, but the Bank of Japan, the, the exporters are saying, look, if you don't do something to lower the value of this yen, we're just going to pack up and move to these other countries so that our revenue and our expenses are priced in the same currency. Um, and then what, who's, who's going to work in Japan? Who's going to get a job? Where, where are they going to work? Great point. That's a great point. So you prefer to stick with the charts and sure you listen and watch the fundamentals, but stick with the charts. Yeah, because of the emotions of the traders, the accumulation, you know, the accumulation phase has to be big institutions buying low, anticipating higher prices. Distribution has to be institutions selling high, anticipating lower prices. So if you follow those charts, you kind of see that those footprints of uh, those buying and selling activities, they lead to chart patterns which repeat over and over again. And those stages, four, one, two, four, uh, up, uh, down, uh, sideways, up, sideways, and down, Rocky Horner talks about them too all the time. It tells you if an asset's being accumulated or dis, uh, sold, distributed. So um, the technicals will definitely guide you in that light. And then if you know where the orders, where prices have turned in the past, you have, kind of have a heads up where prices potentially could turn in the future. Great point. Great, great point. Great point. Let's see if we can uh, find. Oh, here's one for me, Steve. Where do you find your article, meaning me, uh, at FX Option? Is it in commentary yet? It's, if you look at the SKU chart, if you go to SKU on the top of it, there's a, a link that you can click on. It's in PDF, Tony, so you should be able to get that. And then that'll help you understand these charts a little bit better. Let's see if we can take some more questions. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.ise.com slash podcasts.